Computer gaming has been around for almost 50 years. So there are literally thousands of games that you can play, from arcade classics through the 8-bit and 16-bit consoles right up to the present day. And the best thing, you can get all of these games and play them on your computer for free. So let's get into some retro gaming. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. There are a number of different ways in which we can play um, sort of retro games. Uh, we can obviously go out and buy ourselves one of the old consoles and set that up, um, connect it up to a suitable TV, get hold of the games, cartridges and so on. But it does become a bit expensive. Um, so even though it's really, there's something special about getting your hands on an actual device, um, it can be a lot of hassle. The other way, of course, is much easier, and that's going down the route of emulation. And that's where we use a piece of software called an emulator, which will turn your computer into one of these old games um, consoles. Now, we're going to be looking today at doing that using a Windows PC. I'll do some other videos based on sort of Mac OS and Linux, but the same basic process applies. We're going to use a software package called RetroArch, which is available for all the different types of computers, um, sort of Mac, Linux, and so on. And that will actually do the emulation for us. And then we're going to put a nice front end on top of that, which really just makes it much easier and nicer for us to play our retro games with um, lots of sort of nice menu systems which show the games and screenshots and so on. And for Windows, we're going to be using a package called Launchbox. So it's a Launchbox as our front end and RetroArch as our emulation system. So. Let's get straight in and start downloading some software and getting things set up. So we'll start by loading Launchbox, which as I say is the front end for our retro gaming. So if we go to a website, launchbox-app.com, we'll get here. And, and really Launchbox, as I say, it's a free application. And this really just makes it easy for you to access your games. So if you scroll down, you'll see that it actually lets you organize your games, um, connect to the emulators. It actually lets you as well import your games from Steam and so on. So that you have just as like a, a one game stop system, which lets you access any game you have on, on your computer. Uh, and there is, uh, so that it is free, but there is a premium version, which gives you something called Big Box, which actually turns your whole, uh, if you if you happen to have this plugged into a TV, say you, you've made yourself a little gaming station, then you can use Big Box, and that really makes it a whole experience, um, totally dedicated around gaming. But we're just going, simply going to work with the free version. So if we go to the download tab, we simply have to supply an email address and they will then send us a download link. So if I type in my email address in here and then click on download, I'll then receive an email with a link in it. I can click that link and that will then download the setup file. And I can simply save that into my downloads folder. And once that's downloaded, I can just open it up and go through the setup process. So I'm obviously going to use English and then going to accept the agreements. And then I'm going to put it in a folder. Now, the best thing to do here is to put this into a folder because um, we're going to be adding lots of different files into this. So, so it defaults into your sort of user area, but I'm going to simply put this on a, its own little folder on one of my disks. So I'm going to put it on drive D. And you can see that it's now going to install the Launchbox into a folder called Launchbox. And that just makes that sure that we can keep all of our files together because we're going to be putting in quite a few different bits and pieces. So let's click on OK for that and then click Next. And then it's going to obviously create a little start menu item for us. And off we go. And during this process, it will ask you to install Microsoft DirectX. So just click Install for that as well. And then once that's installed, it should then boot up and start up LaunchBox. So 
So once that starts up, uh, we get this sort of welcome message. I just click on the close and we're now into LaunchBox. And to begin with, there, there are lots of options here for getting a quick setup. But for now, we're just going to close that and stay in LaunchBox. So that's our LaunchBox front end installed. But as you can see, as yet, we don't have any games or any platforms or consoles installed. So let's sort that out next. The emulator package we're going to use is called RetroArch. Um, so if you head across to website retroarch.com, you'll, you'll find the website for this. Now this, um, it does have a, a front end for the emulators, but we'll find that LaunchBox actually provides a much better experience um, with lots of sort of the game graphics and better menuing system. So RetroArch really is going to then just manage our emulators for us. And this is a multi-machine emulator. So it's not just a single um, console. This will actually do all your arcade games and all of the retro consoles. So if you head along to the download area, you'll see that um, RetroArch is actually built for all different platforms. So your Windows, Mac, OX and Linux. Uh, and also it'll also run on a number of tablets and some games consoles as well. So it, it really is a, a truly cross-platform application. So we really need to come down here and then find our Windows version. So again, um, depending on what sort of Windows you have. So again, um, I know that I have a 64-bit Windows. If you're not sure which one you have, then go for the 32-bit. What I'm going to do, I'm going to download the installer for Windows 64-bit. So now I'm going to just simply click on it to run the installation program. And once that comes up, we're just going to click on Next and accept the terms. But then the important bit is where we s install it to. And we're really going to install it inside our LaunchBox folder. So if I click on Browse here, um, I have put my LaunchBox onto one of my drifts. I I've got multiple hard drives on my computer. So I've put it onto my Drive D. So you probably put it onto Drive C LaunchBox. What you need to do now is inside your LaunchBox folder, we're going to make a new folder which is going to hold our emulators. So I'm going to make an emulators folder and then I'm going to select that one. And that's the folder I'm going to install into. So you can see we're now going to install onto Drive D in my LaunchBox folder into the emulators folder inside that, and then it's going to install it inside the RetroArch folder. And that just simply means that at a later date, I may want to install some extra emulators to allow me to play different systems. So I will put them all inside my LaunchBox emulators folder. So at least I have them all in one place. So once I've done that, I just click on Next. And I can just say I want to install the DirectX 9 runtime, just in case we need that. And then we'll click on Next. And again, Start menu, and let's install that. Okay, so once that's finished installing, um, we don't need RetroArch running at the moment, so I've just closed that down. And then I'm going to go back into LaunchBox. So we've installed RetroArch, which has the ability now to generate our emulators, but we haven't yet connected that up to LaunchBox. So in LaunchBox, we go to the menu. So the menu for LaunchBox is with these little hamburger symbol. And once we pull that up, if we go to our Tools menu and Manage Emulators, we can see at the moment we don't have any emulators. So I'm going to click on Add. And we want to install RetroArch. And that's one of the named emulators that the system knows about. So it automatically will set some things up to work correctly with um, RetroArch. And then all we need to do now is to tell it where we installed it. So you can see here where we have the emulator application path. Simply click on the Browse button, and then we simply browse to where we installed it. So again, it, it automatically takes us to the LaunchBox folder. And we, of course, put it inside Emulators and RetroArch. Then scrolling down here, you'll see the executable file here, retroarch.exe. We simply select that. And that comes in, you can see it filled in. And then all we do is click on OK. And we now have RetroArch linked into our launch box. 
The next thing we need to do is we now need to set up some platforms. So we've got our front end, we've got our emulator manager, we just need to set something up. So I'm gonna start off with just um, setting up a, a Super Nintendo Entertainment System, which is one of the 16-bit arcade syst or, sorry, consoles from sort of the late 90s. So when that will be managed by RetroArch. So I'm going to highlight RetroArch, I'm going to edit its properties, and I'm going to set up some associated platforms. So down here, we'll see that at the moment, these are most of the platforms that RetroArch can handle for us. There are some more we can add in there. But you can see here at the moment, all of these have a status of missing core file. The way RetroArch works is that it is, it is an emulator manager. So once we have RetroArch, we then need to install these things called cores. And each core is the actual emulator code for that particular console. So you can see here we have a Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And it's saying that it would like to use the Super or the SNES 9X libretto. And, and libretto is sort of uh, the, the, the brand of emulator that we're going to be using. So they're called libretto cores. And that just simply means that they can plug into RetroArch and we can then use them. So we need to go and make sure that we actually install that core. And we need to do that from inside RetroArch. So to do that, we have to run RetroArch itself. So if I come down and if I open up my um, Windows Explorer, okay. So I'm on Windows Explorer. I'm gone. I've gone to my folder where I have LaunchBox and Emulators and RetroArch. And inside there, you will find the RetroArch executable. Remember, that's the one we linked into LaunchBox. So I want to open that up. And that will open up the RetroArch front end. So let me just bring that into view so we can um, have a play with that. Okay, so this is the actual RetroArch front end. And you can actually run all the games from here. But as you can see, it, it's sort of very text heavy. So um, it, it's, not, it's not quite what we're after. You, you'll be much more impressed when you see the launch box system. So we need to load a core. So if we click on load core, and we want to download a core because of course we haven't got any here. And we really just, you can see here, th these are all the cores that you can download. Um, so depending on what system you want to emulate, so you can see here, um, so the Amstrad CPC is one of the sort of 1980s um, home computers. We then have arcades, so we can emulate lots of arcade machines. Um, and, and you'll see if we go down here, there, there's a whole range. So the Atari ones uh, and so on, all the Commodore game, um, machines. Um, there's various DOS systems. As so we go down here, we have our Nintendo stuff. And somewhere down the bottom here, we have our SNES. Okay, so you can see down here, we have the SNES. And if we go back to, to RetroArch, it was looking for the SNES 9X. Okay, so again, there's there's lots of different cores that you can run, but we want then the S90, S, S, SNEX 9X, and we'll run the current one here. So you might ask which of these cores are the ones you should be running for each for each of these um, consoles, um, and and really they all work and they all have their own certain peculiarities. Um, some are faster than others, some are more accurate than others. Um, and really the only way of telling that is to watch sort of a video, get some advice or have a search on the internet to see which ones people recommend. But again, LaunchBox does tend to recommend the sort of the most compatible ones. So it's saying here, this is the one that it feels you should be using. And, and that's pretty much a good recommendation to go for. So let's just simply um, click on that. You can see that it has now installed that core for us. So if we come back out here to our RetroArch, again, if, if we cancel that, and if we then go back in and re-edit RetroArch, it should reload the associated platforms. And if we scroll down then, we should find that we now have our SNES is now, it has the core loaded, so we are ready to play some games. So what we've got to do next then is get hold of some games. 
So if we simply do a search on Google for download game ROMs, you'll come up with lots of results. And, and these websites then are offering you uh, free downloads of the little ROM files that will get the games working on your emulator. So, so basically you used to have to buy a cartridge which plugged into one of these consoles. And people have taken the software off those and provided them here as a little download file. So this is one area of retro gaming which can be slightly dodgy. There are a number of rules around the ownership of games and um, software copyright and so on. And su supplying games for download is in a grey area, let's say, off, off the law. Um, and partly as well, because these websites know that you are going to be downloading files from their website down to your computer, it is obviously an easy way for hackers to let you download uh, viruses and, and scamware and so on. So we do need to be very careful. Make sure you have a good up-to-date antivirus and an internet protection software. Um, if you're using free versions of any of the antivirus packages, I would strongly advise that you opt for the full paid for packages. Um, the free packages give you basic protection. Um, if you want proper up-to-date protection, then you really should be using a paid package. And, and that's an advice just generally on computers that I would give you. Um, it's one piece of software that you don't really want to skimp on. What we're looking for when we get to a download is we should simply be downloading a zip file of that game. Some of these places will get you to download an executable file or they'll ask you to install some sort of download manager program. As soon as they start to talk about you installing programs or downloading exe files or self-extracting files, then basically run away as fast as you can. Do not do that. Um, that's the easy way of embedding viruses and, and malware into your um, downloads. And as soon as you run that program, it will probably ask you to be administrator and it will put nasty stuff onto your computer, basically. So be careful. There are some here which um, work well. Um, and some which don't. So again, I'll, I'll take you through where I would go to get my downloads, okay? So, one of the very best places that used to let you download stuff is a place called MU Paradise. Um, this basically had any game you want to find for any platform you want to find, um, but um, they were about a year ago um, being pressured by Nintendo to stop um, allowing people to download Nintendo ROMs. And they took the opinion then that as it was getting a bit of pressure from um, legal teams, that they would take all of their ROMs off their website. Now, they didn't actually do that. And there is a bit of a workaround, but as far as going to the website and trying to download something, it won't allow you at the moment. Um, but I will take you through in a, a separate um, video on, on how to use a little workaround which still lets you get hold of their catalogue. Okay, um, so do, do make sure you hit the subscribe button so that when I release that video in a few days, um, you'll be able to get hold of that. But if you want to just download single games at the moment, um, one of the places which I go to is a, is a website called Gametronics. Uh, and I use that because it's, it's not one of the ones that people normally find. And as such, it's it's actually a nice, clean way of getting hold of the games. There's there's lots of advertising around. You can see here that it, it's that the website is covered in advertising. And of course, that's how this person makes their money. Um, so in a sense, that's a good sign because they're making money through advertising and not through trying to scam you. So... This does give you then access directly to your game downloads. So let's go across here and we can see here, there, there, it is a French website, so you've got to get through a bit of the French bit on it. Um, but let's go to, we want to, we're going to do a Super Nintendo um, download. So let's go into our Super Nintendo and here we go. 
And you can see there that we have, um, it gives you a list of emulators, um, which of course we're using our, our um, retro arch to get into that. And it then gives you a list of um, games by letter. Okay, but what of course we can do here is if you happen to know what, and again, you, you can simply just browse through that. So there we go to browse, uh, and you can see here we have a list of games that you can download for your Super Nintendo. And again, there are thousands of them, to be honest. Uh, and again, when you complete, think about all the different consoles here, there are a lot of games which we can start to play. But again, if, if you happen to know which game you want, so I'm going to go for Super Ghosts and Goals, which is this is a great little game. So if I go to Super Ghosts, in the search box, you'll see here it brings it up, and we have here our, our Super NES version of Super Ghosts and Ghouls. And that's just, and again, all, all the, these, these, um, let me just get rid of that. Okay, so again, there's lots of advertising come up, but again, that, that's easy to, put, easy to put up with, there's nothing nasty there. So we go in here, it tells you a bit about the game, obviously in, in French, but of course, um, Google will auto translate that for me. And then down here, when we come down a bit more, there is a download. So again, this is going to download it as a 7-zip file, and that is absolutely fine. Our RetroArch will handle that with ease. So let's click on that. And let's get rid of that again. And then we simply download the zip file, or the 7-zip file. Okay. So I'm just simply going to put it into my Downloads folder. What, what I suggest you do here is... Um, once you get into retro gaming, you're going to be downloading a lot of game files. So make sure you do um, file them away sensibly so you know which particular platform you, this game is for. So you might put this inside a, a, an SNES folder. But I'm just going to just quickly just save it down there so we can show the principle of how we get a game inside our um, launch box. So that file's been downloaded now. And I need to now boot up my launch box. So once I've got launch box running, I'm just going to go to the menu and tools. And then down here, there's a number of ways of bringing in ROMs, but we're just going to use the import function. And then we're going to import some ROM files. So this brings up a wizard, which we can just sort of going through. And really we need to tell it where the ROM files are. So if, if you've downloaded a number of, of ROM files and put them into a folder, so remember we said we might put all of our, our Super Nintendo games into a single folder, we can simply add the whole folder in one go and it will go through and scan them all and then import them. Or we can just add a single file. So again, I've just downloaded a single file. So I'm just going to go to Add Files. And then I'm going to go to my Downloads folder, and you can see there that I've got my Super Ghosts and Ghouls, or sorry, Super Ghouls and Ghosts. So I'm just simply going to select that and open it. So it's now going to try and import that file. If I then go on to the next, um, it's asking me what platform am I going to use for this? And again, this is a Super NES game. So let me just come down here to uh, Super, it's here eventually. So Super Nintendo Entertainment System. We go next. The emulator we're going to use is RetroArch. And then it asks me what we want to do with the file. So at the moment, my file is in my downloads folder, but it's it's good if you actually copy it into the LaunchBox games folder. Uh, and that really means that um, LaunchBox allows you to transport this between different computers. So by putting it inside the LaunchBox games folder, then it, it makes that process much easier. Your actual games come along with your launch box, um, which again, we may not be using that at the moment, but it, it does become a very useful feature in the future where you can actually stick your whole games compilation with all the software onto a USB drive and then take it with you. Um, and again, that's part of the reason why we install the emulators inside our launch box folder. So the whole thing goes along and you, you, you can maybe even take this to a party and just take your entire games collection with you. So there's, there's, there's reasons why we do this, but that's what I always do anyway. So I'm just gonna copy my file into my LaunchBox games folder. The next bit then is game information. And what will happen here is that a LaunchBox will actually go out to a games database and it will search for screenshots and box adverts and manuals and, and whatever about this game. And that's the big 
plus for using LaunchBox is we get lots of information and lots of graphics so that when we come to use our games, um, it's a much nicer um, experience. And we'll, we'll see what that actually is in a second. So make sure you tick that box. Then which bits of information you want. So just leave everything selected. You can see there it's going to try and get hold of lots and lots of information about this game. So on to next. We can use something called um, MU Movies, and that will give you little video clips of the games. Um, so if, if you do have a login for that, then you can configure it here. To be honest, I, I tend not to, because that does obviously take a, long, a while to download, especially if you're downloading um, and importing a lot of files in one go. So let's just miss that out for now. And then just leave, there's a, there's a, 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 a preset set of ticks boxes there. So let's just leave those alone. Um, and click on next. And then it's ready now. So it says it's identified that as super, ghosts, super Ghouls and Ghosts and so on. And we can just click finish and it will now start importing that game and then the graphics for that. And that will take a little bit of time. And again, especially if you have a large number of games that we're importing. Um, and again, I, I will show you when we look at the MU Paradise workaround, I'll show you how you can download basically the entire games catalog for a console in one go. Uh, and at that point, if you're importing that, obviously, um, you're going to have to go off and, and have a cup of tea, um, have your dinner, have a sleep and then come back. Um, so let's just import this one game and you'll see what the process is. So it's now going off, it's having a look at this LaunchBox Games database and it will start to then download the artwork and so on for use in, in our, in our catalogue here. Well that took about a minute to work through in my system and we can see now that we have our game imported and we get the nice box art here in our games catalogue. If I highlight that game, you can see we get some game information coming over here, all about who, who made it, when it was, and so on. We get some reviews and some game um, information here. And then there's various screenshots. Okay, So it, it just makes the whole process of your retro gaming just that much more interesting with, with sort of the artwork and some history of the game and so on. Uh, again, if you use the big box version of LaunchBox, then this these graphics and so on are used to give you like a full screen experience for each of the games. So it's, it's worth having a look at that if you want to. I, th I think there is a, fr a, a free trial um, of Big Box that comes with the download. So do have a look at that. And again, I say it, it is it is it does make the whole experience a really nice slick process. But now that we've got our our game downloaded, so we now have. Our, our Super NES game, you'll see that our, our menu down the side here has changed a little bit. So because we have downloaded a game for the Super NES, then we it appears now in our list of consoles. And again, we can simply go across then to our Super NES console and we have that same game listed. So to play a game, all you simply do is double click on it. And that will come up. So let me just move it so we can see the actual game itself. And we now have a Super NES console running on our computer. So the last thing we need to check are game controls. So when you plug in your Xbox controller or, or whatever it is you have, um, mostly RetroArch will be able to detect that and set itself up correctly. But if you happen to have one, so I have a little Super NES controller here, which I plug in. Uh, and when I, when I try and use that, it doesn't quite work. So I need to go and map that myself. So I need to go into my settings and my input I then need to come down here and look at my port one controls. And when I come in here, again, so sorry, the various ports then are, if you have more than one controller plugged in, then of course you'll have port one and port two, but port one then is the first device that you plug in. 
So you can see it, it sees that it is a retro pad, but down here it isn't giving me any bindings for my buttons. It's just using keyboard keys. So what I need to do now is I need to define each of these. And really what I can do here, um, I can do the set all controls, which will run me through them all. But my retro pad doesn't have all of the options. So you can see here there's lots and lots of different options um, which will cover um, all the different types of controls that you could possibly set up. So my control doesn't have any of the analog sticks. So I'm just going to do this individually then. So I come down here, I simply select the option and then click the button on my controller. So select the option and then click B on my controller. And you can see that it now says that it's going to be linked to button two on my controller. And I can then just go through and do the same for all the other buttons. Okay, so that's all the buttons then for my controller. So I now need to go, go back, I'm sorry, go okay and go okay. And then I need to go onto my main menu and I need to quit, re quit RetroArch to make sure that it saves those settings. So now if I go to my Super Ghosts and Ghouls game, um, I should be able to use my controller. So now in the game, if I press my start button, that should get the game going. I can start my game. And we now should be able to use my controls. So again, for this game, if I keep pressing start, it misses these cutscenes. And we're now into the game. I should be able to now use my game controller. And do my gaming here. And okay, so we've now got our fully working game connected up to my game controller. And off we go. So that should be everything you need to get into retro gaming. As I say, the process we've gone through to set up a Super Nintendo Entertainment System is exactly the same as any of the other consoles. Um, the, the arcade games using MAME as the emulator is a little bit different. And again, I'll cover that in a separate video. And actually, each of the games consoles, I'll make a little video for those as, as time goes on, showing you both how to get hold of the games and then what games are, are, are my favourites at least. And say, in, in the very next video I'll go through the idea of how we can use a bit of a workaround to be able to reuse the MU Paradise website. And again, that is the one that lets you download full back catalogue downloads so we can get all the games for a console in one go, which is an incredibly powerful way of doing it. Uh, the very last thing then, just um, a couple of bits on using RetroArch. So if you look on the screen behind me there, I do have that Super NES game up and running. Uh, and really all I can do here is if, if, if I want to go full screen or windowed mode, I can just press the F key uh, and that will then just move between both windowed and full screen mode. So again, usually when you're playing the games, you'll want to be in full screen mode. And again, to get out of a game, you simply press on escape and that will take you out of the game. So have fun with that. Um, get yourself lots of games downloaded, and I will see you very soon in the next videos. Bye for now. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.